since I can't adjust the fueling, let's go ahead and put it in rocket launcher mode. Wow. <laughs> my garage. I'm sorry it's been a little while since you've seen me, but I've been waiting for my Mitsubishi Mirage engine head to come back from the machine shop so I can get to put the engine back in the dune buggy. So I don't actually, it's been a couple of weeks, I don't remember what I showed you guys, so let me just kind of pick up where we're at here. So obviously I had to pull the engine out because I've got to do my turbo oil feed hookups and everything, which requires me to drop the pan out of the engine. Just got the head back. So this is fresh back from the machine shop. What they did is a performance valve job. So they put a five angle grind in my valves for me. They resurfaced this uh, seat here. Uh, also, the port and polish has been done. Most of the work has been done to the intake side. This is the exhaust side. He knocked down a few sharp edges on the exhaust side, but really nothing crazy on the exhaust. Opened it up just a smidge. Most of the work was done to the intake side. Try to get you an angle here where you can see in there. Left a nice rough finish there so that fuel will atomize nicely. He did uh, create some knife edges on some of the intake runners and just a nice smooth of the surface there. The valve specs have been reset to, let's see, 100, no, 120 thou on the exhaust side and 90 thou on the intake side, so that should be good for our turbo. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the cam work done. There are no aftermarket cams available for this, and because I could not source more of these little tappet buckets here, um, I was not able to have this ground down. There is an option available if you are determined to come up with a better grind, a performance grind on your cam. There's a company in California called Webcams, and what they'll do is they will weld these lobes for you and then they'll regrind it. It is a very costly process. They quoted me about a thousand dollars to weld these two cams with the three lobes per cam. Probably would have, you know, made another 10 or 15 horsepower with the cam, but uh, I just didn't want to spend a thousand dollars. I'm a thousand dollars into the head work on this thing anyway And so I'd be two grand in it between cams and head work. So I mean the whole engine itself is a four hundred and fifty dollar engine So I think you guys can understand why I didn't want to spend that extra money So I do have to put obviously a return feed into the engine um, Unfortunately, I've got to drop our pan down. So I guess I got to take the starter out of place and get working on that
I'm working on this valve cover here and I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing. On the 3A92, you have your PCV valve which goes over here and then you have this vent side over here. It's hooked up to a vacuum, of course. It's pulling emissions, fumes from the engine, so it's creating a negative pressure, which is what you want, ideally, is a negative pressure. And so it's drawing in from this and pushing out through here, pulling out through here. When we start getting up into the high horsepower, that little ventilation is not going to be enough to support the turbo. So we're widening this thing up. I just found a couple of fittings here. Yeah, that's going to Flow much better. We'll get it hooked up to a oil catch and that'll be that. All right, we're gonna be testing this turbo finally. The first time I brought the thing out with the supercharger, I had spent, I don't know, five or six hours putting the whole supercharger together. It was like completely insignificant amount of time. I didn't really care if the thing blew up. I didn't want to blow it up, but I didn't really care if it did. Now that I've got weeks slash months into this turbo setup and engine work. I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to be a lot more careful, be more attentive to my AFRs and boost, how much we're actually pushing in this engine. We'll cap this thing at 15, and I probably won't run it at 15. I'll probably run it at 10 pounds. But 15 would be kind of pushing the upper limits of the head. Definitely the Conrad's journal bearings, all of that happy stuff. I'm nervous. No, no. Dang, man. What'd you go jumping off there for? I know some of you are going to miss the sound of that AMR 500 just screeching away. Really, until you rode in it, you had no idea how obnoxiously loud it was. Now, I don't have the oil, the uh, coolant lines hooked up to the turbo so we're running off of oil cooling only on that turbo which is why I have to take it especially easy my ghetto boost gauge isn't even working wow there was some boost there guys um, yes please this thing is spooling quick Check this out. We're making like 5 PSI at like 2600 RPM. Overall, a pretty successful first run. Let me show you the damage report here. So, I had a little boot fix here. You can see with some shoe goo, and it's leaking a little bit. Really, I need to replace these boots, but man, they're hard to get on there. It's not a good day for boots because, oh, you see all that grease packed in there? That boot came loose too. Oh yeah, you can see it from there. So, there's that. So yeah, we're definitely making some pressure. I got to review the footage, but uh, I was seeing, I think I was seeing like six or seven PSI on the top end. All right. I'm just gonna send it at this point. I don't know what to expect, man. I don't know if I got enough fuel, too much fuel. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna sprayer and prayer. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got going on. I mean, it sounds okay. Just don't know how this fuel table in AFR is gonna come in.
Okay, so a couple of things that are immediately apparent. I need some smaller wall tires. So we need uh, smaller wall tires for better high speed control. Also, we got to do something about these brakes because she is sketchy fast. Okay guys, so I was thinking that was going to be the end of the video, but after reviewing the data logs, I was a little disappointed that we were only ever able to achieve 14.7 PSI of boost. Taking the buggy back out locally, I'm going to disconnect that wastegate actuator and see if we can just get a little bit more send in our buggy here. <laughs> this should be a wild one. Well, since I can't adjust the fueling, let's go ahead and put it in rocket launcher mode. <laughs> oh boy. She's fun up that time. I just cooked my clutch, y'all. Good night, sweet prince. Well, that's your dinner in. Man, that was absolutely magical for all of like 60 seconds until slippage, major slippage. Tell me what you guys think. I haven't assessed anything yet, but I'm just guessing we're overpowering the stock clutch. It got exponentially worse the higher the gear I was in, which I guess would seem to be like it would be a clutch issue. But if you guys have any thoughts, leave them down below. Now, 